In this video, we will be giving a forecast for the spring U.S. weather, specifically for the eastern half of the country as it's giving itself away most at this point. Let's begin with a review of the 2017 climate update from December 21st to 2017, easy to find online. After years of seeing claims of data manipulation and even fraud in the climate game, we found one of the original claims to that effect. Back in 2009, then, IntelliCast wasn't as public as it is now. It's where the weather company's top guys did major modeling and fulfilled big private contracts. They flat out accused NOAA of manipulating climate data and omitting others that couldn't be explained away. They claimed to have been defrauded of the real information. And as a reminder, that's possibly the world's top scientists on that topic calling out the process. We then kindly reminded everyone that our tenure in this interglacial period is by far the longest on record, and even if there is the stated one degree of human-caused warming, let's just operate under that assumption for now. The Earth is on track to drop us around 10 degrees or more, which is a lot to overcome to stay out of an ice age. We then heard the bombshell from Yale University. While the leading explanation for the global warming pause has become that the heat is hiding in the Arctic, Yale proved that there is a ticking climate bomb, a cold one, waiting there instead. The Beaufort Gyre has anomalously held its cold, fresh water for longer than any other time on record, and when released, they claim it will drastically affect the Atlantic. Less than one month after Yale put that out, Princeton chiming in about the failure of climate models to project the cooling effect of clouds, which is an academic's kind way of saying, pardon me, but the future is not going to be as hot as you think. You're underestimating those white things in the sky. Observers know that with the sun heading lower and Earth's magnetic field dropping as well, the cosmic ray cloud modulation will be amplified for decades. So, with La Nina now set in, and the Beaufort Gyre about to let go, and with a colder future projected by Princeton than existing climate models starting today, we are setting up for a continuation of the heavy snowfall this winter, perhaps even into early spring, and then a rapid shift brought on by the inevitable increased sunshine could make for the same type of tornado risk, fast snow melt, and heavy rain we saw in 2011, especially if the jet stream blocking remains in place, which is absolutely expected, and in fact, Based on exogenous modulation studies in the solar physics literature, we do expect it to get worse. I remember the 2011 event on the Mississippi River, and it hasn't really been as much of a concern since then. Might be another one of those years.